We've been sharing at the church here for quite a while now on the covenant. And, and I pray that it's been a blessing to you. And in and, and reality, I think I've got more out of it than anybody else. And, and it's been a real, real eye-opener to me. It's been a real uh, challenge for me to rise up above the things that I sense and feel in the natural. How many people know we have a natural man that wants to control and dominate and, 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 you know, but when the spirit man can rise up inside you, he will overcome that natural man every time. And though sometimes we feel, you know, our feelings, we feel negative or we feel this or we feel that, uh, God wants to raise us up that we can find the power of God and, and, and break through and win the victories. We were listening to uh, John or Joel Osteen this morning and uh, he was just sharing just truths that were amazing. And one of the things he spoke about was Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego as they went through the fire. And you know, again, he just brought it back that the only thing that got burnt were the things that, caused, that bound him, but that bound them, that, that they had their arms and their, and their feet tied. And the only thing that got burnt was those shackles and you know, I, I want to say this, many times we go through some things, but going through some things, God wants to release the shackles and the doubt or the unbelief. Because you see, as a result of those, those young people, they must really feared for their lives. But they said, well, if you kill me, we'll praise God anyhow. You can do whatever you like, but they most really weren't expecting God to do what he did. And as he burned off those things off, off them and they, they were there and of course the king looked in and they, they, or somebody looked in and they said, you know, what are you seeing there? They said, well, it's funny, we only threw three in but we see four. And one of them looks like the son of God. And, and of course then, then uh, what was the king's name? Nebuchadnezzar. That's a, everybody say Nebuchadnezzar. <laughs> uh, the king, he, he said, let all, let everybody worship that, their God. Because he's the only true God, amen? And so God, sometimes when we're going through some things, all we can see is what we're going through because that's what the enemy wants to magnify in our thinking. And he doesn't want you to see the end result. And the end result was, you know where the Bible says that he wants to do exceedingly abundantly above? <laughs> he wants to do exceedingly abundantly above all, you see, they must have thought just deliver us from the fire, but God wanted to do more than just deliver them from the fire. He wanted to establish something so dynamic and so powerful that, uh, that the whole of, of there was, a, there was a, just a shift and the whole nation then began to worship the God of Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego. Amen. So, you know, let's believe as we go through some things. I, 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 I heard this saying once and it came to pass. I'm glad it didn't come to stay. Amen. <laughs> How many people are glad it didn't come to stay? It came to pass. And we're going through these things. See, it was, it was God's plan to have a people uh, that he could pour out his love and his blessing on. If, if we don't understand the foundations of man, if we don't understand God's original plan, well then, how can we ever attain something? See, see, God's original plan was to have a people that he could be their dad, that he could be their father, that they could be his children, that he could just pour out upon them the blessing and pour out upon them his goodness and his mercy. And, and, and he wanted to have a fellowship with them. He wanted, to, you know, just to, for them to be so happy and to so, be so fulfilled. He wanted to supply all of their need. He just wanted to be their God. And of course, you know, that, that was God's plan. And, and sometimes we've got to come to the, to the fundamentals. We've got to come back to the, the foundation so that we can understand where God's coming from when he says what he says. It was God's plan to have that people. And of course, in Genesis uh, chapter 1, he sets his plan into action. He starts his plan, and in the beginning it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the water. Then God said, Let there be light. So here, here it is. Now God's starting to say, First of all, I'm going to create something for man to live in. 
and, and he starts to speak into the situation. And of course, the light came. And, and then he started to do other things, let there be firmament. And, and, and you know, then, then he just went on. And, and, and somewhere along the line, then he came and he said, let us make man. Let us make man in our own image and in our own likeness. And, and let's give man dominion or authority over all of creation. All of all, everything that I've created, I want him to have dominion over it, over the cattle, over the sheep, over the over everything. I just want want them to know that this it's theirs. Amen. See, God created the, the earth for us, not for Himself, and He wants us to to have this earth and use this earth and and this earth to be a blessing to us. And it says there in Genesis two sixteen. Uh, and it says, then the Lord commanded, or he warned uh, them not to, not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Sometimes when we look at this, we think, well, God set a trap for man. No, God never set a trap for man. He just wanted to test man to see if man would be obedient. Because I don't believe for one minute that, that they were going around like in a drought I see where the kangaroos are beginning to eat the bark off trees. They've really got no substance in it whatsoever because of the droughts. Cattle and sheep are dying and different things that's going on. And I don't believe for one minute that the, that the Garden of Eden was in drought. I believe that there would have been an abundance of so much, you know what I mean? So much fruit, so much of everything that, was, that man needed. But there was one tree that he said, look, just, just don't eat of that. Don't eat of that one. Because the day you eat it, you'll surely die. We know then when we come to Genesis chapter 3, that we find there that it speaks about an enemy that was more cunning. And this is where the spanner hits the, work, the wall, where, 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 where the enemy deceives and, and uh, they start to partake. And of course, they, they find themselves naked and God comes down in the cool of the evening to speak to them and they hide themselves and they're ashamed and... They'd, they'd actually taken uh, fig leaves and tried to cover their sin. See, one of the things man does is he tries to cover. God doesn't want to cover. He wants to deal with it. He wants to eliminate it. He wants to wipe it out altogether, amen, so that we can be free. He commanded them, do not eat of that. He didn't set a trap. He didn't uh, but a test to see if we would do what he wanted to do. Genesis 2, 18, we find that uh, God was so interested in man that he wanted to give him a companion so he wouldn't be alone. First of all, he created animals. Now, I love Susie, my dog, but it's no match for Nan. <laughs> See, the fall came and put a spanner in the works. Of course, in Genesis 3, 9, we find that, that when God comes down and says, what's going on here? The first thing Adam says is, this woman that you gave me. That's where we should have stuck to the animal. <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't, that's not in my notes, so don't, that was not. It was a, <laughs> it's this woman you gave me. And, and then the woman says, oh, no, hang on, hang on. It's, it's that serpent. And, it, and everybody started blaming one another. See, when we get into trouble, we try to blame everyone else for our problems. It's not my fault. And, I, and I'm interested in what uh, Greg was saying today, that it's, it's time to take responsibility. It's time to be what God call, wants us to be, children of the Most High God. I believe we have to take responsibility for our own actions and our own mistakes. There was a drunk, he came in and uh, he, he was a mess. He was just a, a drunk and... And this guy was trying to help him and, and trying to, you know, set him free from this thing. And, and, and he says, oh, man, he said, you, you don't understand. You don't understand. It's that woman. It's that wife of mine. She makes me do it. She makes me do it. And the guy said, well, what did, he, did she knock you down on the ground and shove a bottle of grog in your mouth? <laughs> Make you drink it? See, we, we, we've got to take responsibility We've got, to, we've got to somehow or other understand that that's not what God wants in our life and we've got to be set free. When we get into trouble, we blame everybody else. 
You see, if the problem's not the problem, then the answer's not the answer. If I'm blaming Nancy for all of my problems, well, I'll never get sorted, will I? I want to blame the devil for all of my troubles. I'll never get sorted. The devil's out there. Yeah, he will try to deceive, but I want to tell you God's greater. Do you believe that? God's desire for you is, is blessing. He gets no joy out of seeing us suffer. He doesn't want us to suffer. We, we see, what I believe happens is that we step out from under the spout where the glory comes out. We, we step out of the blessing. And I want to say it again and again and again this morning. And I know that what I'm sharing is, is just so, so simple But God's intention towards you and me is blessing. It is not cursing. God wants to bless us. That's a good word, abundant. He, He wants to bless us, friends. But what happens is if I step out from underneath that spout, if I step out from underneath the blessing, well, then there's nothing that God can do. Just let let me explain. Uh, Let's go to Genesis, or Numbers rather, Numbers 22. And verse 1, it says, Then the children of Israel moved and camped in the plains of Moab, on the side of Jordan across from Jericho. Now Balak, the son of Zibor, saw that Israel had done to the Amorites. And Moab was exceedingly afraid of the people because they were many. Moab was uh, sick with dread because of the children of Israel. So Moab said to the elders of Midian, now this company will lick up everything around us as an ox licks up the grass of the field. And Barak the son of Zippor was king of the Moabites at that time. And he sent messages to Balaam the son of Beor at some other place. I think I've done pretty well, amen? So that'll do, that'll do. I've just expressed how smart I am. At Pithor, whatever it was, which is near the river and the land of the sons of the people, to call him saying, look, a people has come from Egypt. See, they cover the face of the earth and are settled next to me. Therefore, please come at once. Curse this people for me, for they are too mighty for me. Perhaps I shall be able to defeat them. He's saying, if you curse them, then I might be able to defeat them and drive them out from the land. For I know uh, that he whom you bless is blessed and he who you curse is cursed. In other words, he he was saying, you know, I, I, I want you to come out there and afflict these people, weaken them so that we can go out there and drive them out. In Numbers 23, let's have a look over here. And uh, verse, I'm just going to read verse 18. There's a lot of things. I'd really encourage you to read this yourself and, and get a, I'm, I'm just going through this for time's sake. And uh, th- this is, this, I'm going to pick this up from in verse 18. It says, Then he took his oracle and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear, listen to me, son, son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie. Church, we've got to hear this. We've got to hear this because when we go through some things, we're saying, what have I done? What's going on here? Why has God allowed this? God hasn't allowed anything. God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Has he said and will he not do? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? Behold, I have received a command to bless and he has blessed and I cannot reverse it. I hear a lot of Christians say that they are cursed. I hear a lot of people say, if you say you are cursed, you are cursed. The Bible says, let the weak say they are strong. Let the poor say I am rich. Let the sick say I am healed. Let those that are in bondage say I am delivered. It's how you speak into a circumstance and what you allow yourself to say is what you'll bring around yourself. 
And if you can rise up today and start to speak the word of God over your life and not expect for the affliction of sickness or the affliction of whatever it might be to come upon you, but rise up and start to speak. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he not said it? Will he also not bring it to pass? God has blessed you and this prophet could not reverse it. He could not reverse it. Friend, I want to tell you, the only way you can, is, is when we step out from under that spout where that glory comes out. When we start wrong confessions, when we start to speak wrong about ourselves, when we start to speak wrong about the Word of God. You see, I, I want to say this, everything that the Word of God says will come to pass. Whether I'm experiencing it today or not, there is going to come a revival that is going to be poured out upon this nation called Australia. This nation of Australia was dedicated to Christ. It was dedicated to God. It is the great south land of the Holy Spirit. And I want to tell you, hell will have to freeze over before God's Word will stop in Jesus' name. Because God has said, I'm going to pour out my spirit. And I'm going to cause a, a revival. There's going to come a latter day revival that is going to touch and eclipse anything that you've ever seen before. Friend, I dared to believe God rather than to believe what I sense or what I feel or what I hear. And you see, there, there is a conspiracy that's going on in the world that will uh, try to pull down the Word of God, try to bring in other things that's going to bring peace. But I want to tell you, there's only one thing that's going to bring peace, and that's when Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Nothing else will bring peace. Nothing else will bring peace. We find here that, that, that this man was tried once, not twice, three times. He, he got this prophet to go to a different place and, and he was hoping for a different outcome. He was hoping that he'd say, yes, I found something here and I'll curse this people. But he said, look, he said, God has blessed them and there's nothing I can do to reverse it. Friend, let this mind get inside of us. Friend, I am not cursed. I am blessed. Amen. I am blessed. And all I've got to do today is I've got to say, God, draw me close to you. God, bring me close to you. If I'm following some other doctrinal philosophy or tradition, well, I can get led up a dry creek. Anybody here ever been led up a dry gully? Not very nice up there. It gets very shallow and very, very, yeah, goodness knows what else. But you see, if I'm following Jesus, if I keep close to him, I believe that he will take me in the direction that he wants me to go. He'll take you to that place of refreshing. He'll take you to, to the places where he talks about the cedars of Lebanon and, and the great date palms and the, and the place in the middle of a desert where, where you'll find refuge. I want to tell you, God wants to bring something around our lives that will cause us to be the head and not the tail. He wants us to, to experience the power of the presence and the anointing of God in such a real way. There's a lot, there's, today, modern Christianity has pushed the Spirit of God away. But I want to tell you, there's a group of people, there's a remnant of, of people that are rising up right now in this hour, right across the nations, right across the world, where, where we're finding that whole synagogues. I want to tell you, the answer to the Muslim thing is not protest. I want to tell you, the answer to the Muslim thing is for Christ to rise up and show Himself strong, that these people will say, why would I want to serve a dead God? Why would I want to serve a God of hatred and bitterness? I want to serve a God that wants to bless. A living God, a real God, a true God. A God, but let me say it again, you've got to come back to the beginning. You've got to come back to the very beginning. When God created the man, he didn't create him so as he could say, I'm going to have somebody here that I'm going to curse. I'm going to have somebody here that I'm going to chastise. I'm going to have somebody here that I'm going to punish. I'm going to be a torment to them. I'm going to be a pain to them. No, he said, I've come and I've got these people so I can be a blessing to them. That's God's plan for my life. Amen. The God of more than enough. The God of more than enough. And I believe that they were going to find a shift that's going to shift us. Going to shift us in a direction that's going to blow our minds. See, there's, there's another over here. I, I, what, what amazes me is we find this people, we find this people here that, 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 that they, they couldn't do anything to curse them. But in, verse, in chapter 25, it says, Now Israel remained in Acacia Grove. And the people began to commit harlotry with the women of Moab. And they invited the people uh, to sacrifice uh, of their gods. And the people ate and bowed down to their gods. 
and Israel was joined to Baal. To Baal. We find here that, that there was nothing that the prophet could do, but they could do something to themselves. You know what? Let me say it again. It's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. There's, it's the goodness of God that leads us to repentance. God wants to somehow or other to come down and in our times of worship and in our times of praise, whatever it is, I believe He wants to descend on us and, and He wants to speak to us. He wants to put something on the inside of us. He, wants to, he wants to, want, doesn't want us to go down some of the paths we're going on. He wants to be able to direct our paths. The Bible says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and He will direct our paths. And we come with an open heart and we come with a sincere heart. Friends, sometimes we can make it so difficult, we can make it so hard for us to find the ways of God. We can, it, you know, we think, man, as I said before, you've got to go and kill so many giants and you've got all this stuff. Some of the things we, we talk about with a, when we're attacked, some people say the church is under attack. Friend, yeah, I, I, I don't want to say that. I want to say the, the devil's under attack. Oh, the church is under attack. We're being attacked. We're being attacked. Well, glory to God. How can you ever win? You know, no team, a football team has ever won playing defense. You never win playing defense. You're just trying to stop the other team from scoring. But friend, when you get an idea, I'm going to go up there and score, amen. I'm going to push through. We're, we've got a, we've got a, a, we're going to attack that thing. We'll attack that thing that, that's pulling you down. Attack that thought that's in your mind. Attack that thing that's, that's saying you'll never make it. Attack that thing that says oh, whatever it's saying to you. <laughs> attack it. Attack it. Start saying we're going to win. How many people believe you're a winner here today? Come on, we're winners. And, but we find this group of people that, that you know, left to themselves, they, they start to do things that are wrong. And, and the Bible says that 24,000 people died as a result of a plague that came upon the people of God. What a horrible thing. What a horrible situation. People died horrible deaths. Horrible deaths. You know, even in the New Testament, uh, this new covenant, we can step out or break the covenant. The covenant that we have. Though we have a, even a better covenant the Bible sp speaks about. And part of that covenant is called grace. The covenant of grace. Grace won't get you over the line, only repentance will. Grace will hold off long enough to, to you come to your senses. Grace will, will, will be, live over our lives while we're feeding in the pig's, pig's pen. Grace will help us while we're eating the husks that, that the pigs are eating until we come to our senses and start to say, I must return to my father's house. I must get back. Somehow or other, I'm going to get back. I'm going to get back to my father's house. Friend, I want to tell you there's got to be something on the inside of us saying, I'm going to get back to that relationship I had with my Savior. I'm going to get back to that fellowship that I had with Him. I'm going to get back to where I believed in Him like I did before. Because yes. many have gone astray. Many today, thousands upon thousands, even in the Sunshine Coast, that are called Christians that do not go to church anymore. Grace will not get us over the line, but it's certainly repentance will. Amen. I believe the biggest trap for mankind, and yeah, you know, we can be so careful. I don't think it's a real bad sins that we think are bad. I don't know about you, but I haven't thought about murdering anybody lately. I might have thought about it a little bit, but <laughs> anybody here thought about murdering anybody lately? Anybody here ever thought about robbing a bank lately? <laughs> Anybody here thought about, you know, some of those things, adultery and all that that goes on, you know? <laughs> I see a hand. <laughs> <laughs> the old pastor was a bit of a character and this guy used to go to sleep every, every Sunday. He sleep. <laughs> And he had the whole congregation all set up. And, and uh, he said, anybody here ever committed adultery? Stan! 
Lord! And this is going close. And he stood up. <laughs> we're standing there. And the pastor was right in front of him. He said, uh, he said, you know what's going on here, boy? No. You know what you stand up for? He said, no, but you and I are the only two standing there. <laughs> You know what I believe the biggest thing that destroys a church is murmuring. Gossips, murmurers. You know the Bible says it this way. It talks about not discerning the Lord's body. Do you know that we're all part of a body? Do you know that the church up the road is part of that body? <laughs> Remember I said just recently that there's one question for sure God's not going to ask you is what church did you go to when you get to heaven? It's irrelevant. We belong to one church. One church. Amen? One church. We belong to one church. God's church. And we can, somebody might do something different to us, okay? We might have done something different. But we don't want to murmur about what they're doing. Amen. We just got to, that's the way they do it. Praise God. Amen. God bless them. Murmuring, murmuring. For this reason, many sleep sick. Many people die. Friend, today I believe that, that God wants to cut out some stuff from us. There's, a, there's a, some scripture I want to read because I, I'm just a, I'm out of time. Have a look with me in Philippians. I hope that you can read between the, the lines here. Because I've been going pretty fast. This is what it says. Let the, uh, two, uh, Philippians 2 verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Friend, we, we need to have our minds renewed. Do you believe that? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made it, see, I'm a child of God today. We're children of God. I'm a child of God. I, I'm not some second rate one. I'm a child of God. I'm a joint heir with Jesus. He's my brother, amen. I am not some, some broken down, whatever it might be that some people might say. <laughs> But I'm a child of God. And I have a father whose name is God. Amen. He made himself of no reputation, taking on the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, God also has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus, amen, every knee will bow. Now, I want you to understand this. When Jesus was there on the cross of Calvary, he humbled himself and became a man. He went all the way to the cross of Calvary. He went into Hades where he was there for three days and for three nights doing something so dynamic. But when it was basically over, he stood up and he said, it is finished. As he rose from the dead, as he was there in Hades, as he, as he rose from the dead, the Bible says that he went over and he took the keys of hell and of death. He took the keys that held you and me bound to the onslaught of the enemy to the death that was supposed to be ours he had a key in his hand that unlocked the door ar around Neil Myers's life and said Neil it is finished you are free you're free to be see he took the keys of hell and of death I should have died because of my sin I should have gone to hell but today I've been set free is that great it is finished it is finished. And what, what he's saying in this is 
And, and I was talking with Joe the other day and I got so excited as we were just sharing this. He said, it is finished. You know, what he believed is, I believe what he was saying is, the effect of Adam's sin is paid for in full. It is finished. The penalty of sin, the penalty of, of disobedience, all that stuff is finished. I've paid the price in full. And now we come back. What I've got to understand and what my brain has got to come in line with, I now come back to God's original plan. I come back to God's original plan when He said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let us give them dominion over the fish and the fowl and goodness knows what else and over all those things. Today, He has given us dominion over the works of Satan. He's given us dominion over, over all things because I've got 27 scriptures here that speak about the authority that we have over Satan. I have got 20 uh, scriptures on prosperity. What God wants to give. I've got 14 scriptures on victory over fear. I've got <laughs> 22 uh, scriptures on victory over sickness. So, see, Satan goes around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he made a vow. If you don't know who you are, and if you don't know that God wants to bring you back to the original. Well, praise God. That's it. Finished, Joe. No more. No pages left. <laughs> We, we, what we do here is we anoint people with oil that uh, need a miracle in their lives. It might be your finance, it may be for your business, it may be for, for sickness or disease or something like that.